Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's Daily Show, where we show you one cool thing, which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I am Sasha Segan. This is Victoria Song, our senior nap analyst. Yes, here at PC Mag, we have someone whose job it is to sleep. Dream big kids, and you too can make up a position for yourself where your corporate overlords will pay you to nap. Yes, it is excellent, and what she has been napping on is this. This is not an IKEA product, it is a different Kia. It is the Nokia Sleep, yes. which appears to be a tiny uh, air mattress for snakes. <gasps> it, it, you know, I would I would test a tiny air mattress for danger noodles, but how, okay, <laughs> that's my favorite word for for internet slang, child slang for snakes. Uh, but no, this is a as you it's like this tiny pad. Um, mm -hmm. If you look inside it, there's actually this pretty cool sensor. Okay. Um, there's the sensor here and an inflatable. There's like inflatable nonsense in there. Okay. Um, and what this does is that you install this under your actual mattress mm -hmm. and you lie it on top of it and it can measure mm -hmm. your heart rate, it can measure your breathing rate and what it does, it monitors and tracks your sleep. So how is it doing that through the mattress? How does it know, how does it know what your heart rate is with you know nine inches of foam or whatever between you and it? That's a great question. Um, the short answer, the TLDR is science. Mm -hmm. um, but no, there's there's a quite a number of sensors in here, and what it does is like it tr there's like, you know, those accelerometers or gyroscopes that'll just basically be able to measure how you move, mm -hmm. and you can actually measure heart rate through sound, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I'm not. Oh, it also measures your snoring. So that's the oh, thing that wow. it can do. So so so, do you have to be the kind of person who like? who like sleeps like a mummy and absolutely doesn't ever move for this to work? No, because I am not a person that sleeps like a mummy that never moves. I, I, I actually, we were talking about it, I somnambulate. I walk mm. in my sleep. I am not a have, still sleeper. Have you ever made a grilled cheese? I've never made a grilled cheese, but I have scared the crap out of my friends by accidentally resembling Samara from The Ring. <laughs> you can see that, right? Right? A little more hair. I had very yeah. long hair. I was in a white nightgown, uh, sleepwalking in the mm -hmm. middle of the night. I really scared a bunch of friends. It was, it was aces. <laughs> um, but no, so what this does is, what you'll do is that if you can just imagine your mattress like mm -hmm, lengthwise mm -hmm. this way, you'll install it underneath so mm -hmm. actually you do if you're like me and you have noodle arms mm -hmm. which cannot lift a mattress on your mm -hmm. own you may need help lifting your mattress so that you can slide okay. it under so you're gonna slide it under this as you can tell like if you can imagine if so this was long wise. enough yeah so like you're you're gonna place it at chest height so uh -huh. that it can measure your heart rate while uh -huh. you're sleeping um, and it's gonna go about this way so it'll be able to tell when you're rolling over okay okay so if you're like if it was just this way, it wouldn't be great. And now if, if and now if there is way. if there is another person in your bed as well, you have to stay in your lane, right? Yeah, you have to stay in your lane. You shouldn't okay. like switch lanes. Um, okay. Although you would have to be doing some crazy sleep dance gymnastic core yeah, choreography to to switch lanes like that. Sometimes there's a phenomenon where like both people end up all the way over at one side, yeah. and like two thirds of the bed is empty, and like somebody is getting elbowed off the end. I think you need at least a queen or king size okay, bed. Okay. Like in a full or, or like a queen, I think you're pretty safe. Okay. Um, if you do want to track two people, you're going to need two of these. Okay. So you can have your own separate accounts. Mm -hmm. um, and actually the nice thing about this compared to something like say uh, the smart mattress that I tested, the Sleep Number 360, is that you're not going to have to worry about your dog messing up your readings because this is going to be at your chest light. Height right. level. So if the dog is down at your feet, it doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't matter. Right. right. Whereas, and like, if the cat is on your face, will that, that will that affect you? It okay. will affect your breathing. So that'll affect your breathing score, okay, possibly. Okay. But yeah. So um, you slide it under your bed. Uh, it connects via Wi-Fi to your phone. Uh -huh. um, and the nice thing about this, compared to like let's say that pillow that we had on the show a while back and the smart mattress, is that this is affordable at ninety nine dollars and you can roll it up and take it with you nice. on And it up. works with existing, whatever your existing this. sleep situation is. Yeah, it works with whatever your existing sleep situation. So you don't actually need a bed if you have, let's say, a futon. This could work with mm -hmm. that as well. Um, and I, yeah. 
If you sleep on a pile of sweaters on the floor. Um, that could... sounds incredibly uncomfortable. Get your life together. Get an mm -hmm. air mattress <laughs> or something like that. If, uh, you if you sleep on your one towel. If you sleep on your one towel, AJ Kumar. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, uh, okay. Anyway. So let's move on to the kinds of data it collects. So, so it collects data. How do you then see and use the data? What does it connect to? So it connects to the Nokia HealthMate app. So if you have Nokia products, like they also have a, um, a bunch of smart scales, they bought Wythings, so they have the... You really like their scale, right? I do like their scale. It's really simple, it's easy to use, it integrates well, So, but we're going to talk about sleep. Mm -hmm. um, it just completely connects over the app, so you can see that, well, not yesterday, but the oh, day before. 7 hours 45, that's what I want. Yeah, this is some good, good sleep time. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's look at how I slept. It, it'll give you a score. Mm -hmm. uh, those are generally arbitrary, closer to 100 you get, that's good. Um, and it breaks down your sleep stages, which, you know, not everything that you sleep on in terms of sleep tech will break down the sleep stages. Mm -hmm. And it does that by measuring your movements and your heart rate. Um, It'll tell you how good your sleep quality was along with your regularity. And your regularity is something like the last seven nights. This oh. is how, how well you slept. So oh what, man, I want this. So what I really like about this is that um, it contextualizes your sleep data. So I test a lot of different type of, types mm -hmm. of things that track your sleep from wearables. Like this is another thing that I mm -hmm. use to track sleep. Um, just like it tells you how long it took you to fall asleep. It tells you how long it took you to get up, I which is, is, is a problem for me, getting so up in the morning. all things I want to know. And it'll also tell you what your heart rate looked like during the night and give you context for what a good BPM while you're sleeping mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And so what they're saying is lower than 60 BPM while you're sleeping is probably mm -hmm. a good indicator that your heart is in good shape, which means, ha ha. And so your heart is in good shape, but when your alarm clock went off, you fr you freaked out. Yeah, I did. Oh, That's okay. basically what it is. And you know, you can get context for it because something that like, so, oh my God, it said I snored for 19 minutes. Cool. Um, so s apparently I snored twice. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do we have any, uh, any, any wide awake people out there with questions? If someone has a fitness tracker already, is this a redundant purchase? So that was actually something I wanted to get into. So I clearly have a fitness tracker already, um, but fitness trackers are giving you a more holistic look at what your health is. If you really want to focus into your sleep and sleep is a problem for you, this is great because you're going to get sleep specific contextualized data for it. So um, just for comparison, like I can bring up my Fitbit Versa and the sleep data that I have on there. Also, I would like to point out that I also I'm wearing a fitness tracker, uh, one that uh, Victoria recommended to me. Yes. And um, I will not wear it in bed because wearing a watch in bed is kind of creepy. That's actually a, a comfort problem for a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. Like my best friend, um, she also bought a fitness tracker based on mm -hmm. my uh, recommendation because I'm dope. Anyway, um, no, she, she, will actually, and I've watched her do it, in the middle of the night, just rip off the, yeah, the tracker. Because yeah. it's really uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, so like, if you look at my Fitbit sleep data, uh, I did not sleep well last night. Um, like, I can get this context, but if I want to look at what my sleep was beyond a week, I can't really figure that out. With mm. the Nokia, you can look at your trends over a month long period of time. And they actually have a wellness program built into the, into the, um, into the app that works over eight weeks to help you try and build better habits. For now, sleeping. can they? Can now? Uh, is there a way to? If you have multiple sources for mm -hmm. wellness data coming in, is there a way to consolidate them? Is there? Is there a way to create a unified portal? If you have a fitness tracker and a different so one sleep way, device. one way you can do it, and this is the reason why I really like this, is that this is IFT compatible. So if you have IFT. Um, well, anyone can have IFT, but if you have the wherewithal, because there's no one real portal way to do it, because every manufacturer, mm -hmm. like they're either compatible with Apple Health or not, and then you're on Android, so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter to you. Uh, if you have IFT, that's a really good way to set up a bunch of spreadsheets where you can automatically have your devices send mm -hmm. your log times mm -hmm. into a spreadsheet mm -hmm. that you can compare easily. Mm -hmm. There's no one real easy way to do it, however, which okay. is, you know, that's, that's a problem. Like this will never track my snoring, but it will give me more accurate data in terms of my movements because it's measuring my heart rate and mm -hmm. it, it can tell when I'm actually leaving the bed. 
Now, uh, now in your speaking of snoring, now you said in uh, in the review it was having trouble detecting snoring, yes. but it sounds like it's worked that out. Well, so here's the thing. This is detecting snoring. Um, I tested this at the same time as I tested the Zeke Smart Pillow, which also detects snoring. Oh, so there might have been like some kind of like like uh, interference issue. I, I don't know if that was interference so much as that the Zeke Pillow is right under my head, mm -hmm. so it has microphones built in there, so it could actually hear me snore quite mm -hmm. easily. This is under, as you said, nine inches of foam. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it heard me snoring, my dog snoring. My friend in, in mm. who slept over snoring. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it was picking up, but on consecutive nights where I was testing with the pillow and this, the pillow said I snored mm -hmm. as loud as a tea kettle. If, um, if everyone's snoring in your house, have you considered an air purifier? I have not, but apparently my snoring is not that loud. Okay. Uh, whereas, you know, uh, what would have been interesting would be to try and test this with my roommate, who, um, sorry to put you on blast is a very loud snore. So, so she, she puts people he, on blast. He, she puts people on blast. He puts people so on blast. So to speak. So yeah. to speak. Uh, yeah. Any more questions out there? So is this really like the only product of this kind right now? It seems like the other thing, options that are kind of like this are smart mattresses. So sleep tech is interesting because it's taken off in the last year or so. Why do like, I feel like I used one of these a couple of years ago and it wasn't that good, but it existed? Oh, there no. was the Wythings Aura. Yes, Wythings yes. Aura. Wythings yes. Aura. So this is like kind of an updated version oh, of okay, that. Oh, okay, okay. It's a lot simpler to use and set up. Um, it's just easier to use. Yeah, they've yeah, rethought yeah. the stuff. They've updated the sensors. So it, I found it to be really good. It's not that there isn't a whole lot of sleep tech out there. There is. It's just that they're not always portable which if you wanna track your sleep over a period of time, like you can't take your mattress with you. If you travel a lot mm -hmm. on the road, like you travel a lot, yeah, I'm... you're not gonna be able to take your mattress with you. You're gonna lose precious nights of data or you're gonna have to yeah. use a fitness tracker, which you don't like sleeping with right. on the arm. Uh, but I could put this under a hotel mattress when I do the bed bug check. Yeah, you could yeah. do that. You could easily do that. I will say that um, when I, we inflated it here in mm -hmm. the labs to just kind of get photos of it. And then when I took it at home, I did have to do a factory reset. So mm -hmm. there are maybe some connectivity issues that you might have to repair. That's very mm -hmm. common with smart home devices as you go from different Wi-Fi networks to different mm -hmm. Wi-Fi networks. But that being said, once it's all set up and whatnot, it was pretty solid to use. Okay. Okay, great. Any more questions out there? Do you say how it um, inflates? Is it like a hand pump? It is not. You don't have to do anything. It's really great. Um, uh, you stick it under the mattress. It'll inflate on its own when it's uh, calibrating. It says it calibrates. It takes about 10 minutes, and you will hear a whirring noise. Uh, the app warns you that you'll hear a whirring yeah, noise, let's know, so it's this fine. This has to be plugged into the wall. Yes, this so is that, is, that right. is one thing um, in terms of a design thing. You do have to think about what your plug placement near your nightstand is. Uh, you may need a power strip, depending mm -hmm. on how many things you have plugged in. Um, this is not a thing that runs on battery, but then you don't have to charge your smart pillow, which was a thing that I had to do mm -hmm. with the other thing. So mm -hmm. it's a trade-off. I actually prefer that. This is most likely going to be a thing, unless you're on the road all the time, that is stationary. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much of a deal breaker that you yeah. have to have it plugged in all the time. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, this is the Nokia Sleep. It is an editor's choice, four star uh, sleep device uh, because it is so affordable and so portable and works with all sorts of uh, mattresses and other sleeping arrangements to track your sleep, uh, to track the quality of your sleep and improve the quality of your sleep in the long term. Uh, the full review, of course, is up on PCMag.com. Thank you all for watching. This has been one cool thing. If you are watching us on Facebook, thank you for coming and participating in the live discussion. Uh, we will be back at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. We are always around on PC Mag's Facebook page at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, if you are on YouTube, then please like and subscribe if you did indeed like this, and we hope you did. We will have a new one cool thing on PC, Mag YouTube, PC Mag's YouTube page every day. Thanks a lot.